As a health extension worker, you need adequate training before you can be effective during the delivery of a baby and before you can offer efficient postnatal care. Practicing with the equipment and with a mannequin is the best way to learn the techniques you will need to master. The first priority at all times is cleanliness of your hands, both for the safety of the mother and child and for your own safety. Our hands are the major source of hospital-acquired infection. You must wash your hands thoroughly for at least one minute, taking care that all surfaces are clean, especially under the nails and between the fingers. An assistant should pour the water for you if there is no running water available. After your hands are washed and rinsed, you can dry them on a clean towel. Once dry, you can then put on a new pair of sterile surgical gloves. Before delivery, you should prepare the bag and mask, choosing the small or larger mask, whichever will be the best fit on the baby. You are then ready to receive the newborn child. Immediately after birth, the baby should ideally be placed on the mother's belly, dried quickly, and observed for spontaneous breathing. If the baby is not breathing, or is breathing irregularly, it should be moved to a good working surface where ventilation should be started. After drying, the first wet towel should be removed and the baby wrapped in a second dry towel. The chest area should be kept exposed for clinical observation to see if spontaneous breathing is established or not. Care must be taken that the baby is not exposed for too long and does not get cold. Hypothermia is a major problem immediately after birth. If there is no meconium, it is sufficient to clean the mouth and nostrils with a clean gauze. Position the baby correctly with a slight extension of the neck in order to keep the airway open. Placing a pad under the shoulders will help to get the correct position. Ventilation with bag and mask should then start, at a rate of one ventilation every two seconds, or 30 per minute. Again, make sure that the correct size of mask has been chosen. While ventilating the baby, you should look at the baby's chest to see the symmetrical movement and look for any color change. Once spontaneous breathing is established, ventilation can stop and you can continue with routine essential newborn care. After training, HEWs should return to their health posts and ensure that they have adequate equipment and are prepared to provide immediate newborn care. These supplies should be prepared and made ready. Soap. A clean towel to dry your hands. A pair of sterile surgical gloves in the correct size. A clean towel to dry the baby. And another clean towel to wrap the baby in afterwards some gauze to clean the mouth and nostrils, a delay mucus trap, a small pad to put under the shoulders to achieve a slight extension of the neck, different size masks to fit a self-inflating ambo bag,
you will also need a cord tie for the umbilical cord. Scissors to cut the cord, or a clean blade, and artery forceps to clamp the cord. A disposable syringe to give vitamin K should also be available, as well as tetracycline eye ointment. The delivery room should have a weighing machine ready for the newborn baby. When the mother is in active labour, you should ensure that all the necessary equipment is prepared and that the drugs are ready. Then wash your hands for at least one minute, dry them and put on the surgical gloves. Immediately after birth, before cutting the cord, you should put the baby on the mother's belly and dry the baby there. Do not rush to cut the cord. First, the baby needs to be dried and wrapped. After a short time, you can cut the cord. The correct position is two fingers distance from the baby's abdomen and two fingers distance on the placenta side. The cord must be clamped on both sides, and then the cord can be cut. Make sure it is dry and clean. The knot is secured, and there is no oozing of blood. Then, tetracycline ointment can be put in both eyes, and a vitamin K shot can be given.
After the initial care has been given, the baby must be weighed. First of all, take the weight of the wrapped baby. And then, after the baby has been returned to the mother, weigh the cloth on its own. The baby's weight is the difference between the two weights. Show the baby to the mother and put them in close contact with each other. Breastfeeding should be initiated within the first hour. <laughs> This is the time to teach the mother good positioning, good attachment, and effective suckling. The first postnatal visit should be within the first 24 hours. Prepare your equipment, put it in your backpack, and go to meet the mother at home. When you reach the home, greet the family and the mother politely, and develop confidence and trust from the beginning. Tell the mother, and the grandmother as well if she is there, why you have come, and ask their permission before you proceed any further. Right. First of all, ask if there are any problems with the mother and her new baby. Then ask about each danger sign in turn, for both the mother and the baby. For the mother, ask, is there excessive vaginal bleeding? Does she have fever? Does she have severe abdominal pain? Does she have a severe headache, accompanied with or without visual problems? Has she had a fit or convulsion? Does she have swelling of the hands or feet? Does she have any breast problems? Does she have a foul-smelling vaginal discharge? Remind the mother that any of these problems, should they occur, could indicate a serious medical problem for which she should seek urgent medical care. Then ask about the baby. Is the baby feeding well? Does she feed the baby at night as well as in the daytime? Is there a history of the baby having a fit? Is the breathing faster than 60 per minute? Does it have a fever with a temperature above 37.5? Or does it feel cold by touching or temperature? Look for severe chest indrawing and listen for grunting. And are the palms of the hands or the soles of the feet yellow? The HEW should then make her own assessment of the baby. Before doing this, hand washing is again very important.
Remember the priority of cleanliness for the safety of the mother and child and for yourself. Hands should be washed for one minute with particular attention to the spaces between the fingers and under the nails. Someone can help you by pouring water for you. After your hands have been thoroughly cleaned, you must dry them with a clean towel. After cleaning and drying your hands, assess the breastfeeding and help the mother to achieve a comfortable position for herself and the baby. You should check for good attachment and effective suckling. Effective suckling is when the baby sucks but pauses occasionally with the mouth open. Tell the mother that she should only give breast milk to the baby for the next six months. The baby must be fed at least eight times during 24 hours, including feeding during the night. If the mother and baby have difficulty feeding, if the baby develops hypothermia, has a fever, or has breathing difficulty, you should tell the mother to take the baby to the hospital or call her HEW. Now you should check the breathing of the baby. A healthy baby would breathe at a rate of 40 to 60 breaths per minute. You should also check the umbilical cord for signs of infection or discharge. Tell the mother what you're doing as you go along. That way, she'll feel confident about your help. The skin color of the palms of the hands and the feet should be checked. If there is yellowish discoloration, it could be a sign of jaundice. The baby's temperature should be checked and the mother told whether it is normal or not. A normal temperature is between 36.5 and 37.5 degrees centigrade. Using the family health care, counsel the mother about her own and the baby's health. Counseling is about breastfeeding and the danger signs for both the mother and the baby and when to seek health care. Check that the mother has understood you. Ask her open-ended questions to make sure she has understood all that you have told her. When necessary, explain again what you've already said and check once more that she has understood. Listen carefully to what the mother has to say and praise her for answering the questions correctly.
The last thing to do is to give the mother two capsules of vitamin A. That is 200,000 IUs. Thank the mother and the rest of the family for their cooperation. And tell the mother that the next visit will be in three days' time. Then you say goodbye and return to your health post.